On the 79th Independence Day, Prime Minister Narendra Modi outlined a transformative roadmap to make India a developed nation by 2047. He announced that India's first indigenous semiconductor chip would be rolled out by the end of this year, while nuclear power capacity would expand tenfold with 10 new reactors under construction. Modi urged scientists and engineers to develop jet engines for Made in India fighter jets. He also declared next-generation GST reforms to be introduced on Diwali, providing tax relief for essential goods and MSMEs. A rupees 1 lakh crore employment scheme was launched to support three crore youth with monthly stipends. Additionally, Modi announced a demography mission to counter illegal migration and a deepwater exploration mission to boost energy independence. On August 14, 2025, Garden Reach Shipbuilders and Engineers Limited delivered Ikshak, the third vessel in the Sandhayak class large survey vessels, to the Indian Navy. This follows the handover of INS Sandhayak in December 2023 and INS Nerdshack in October 2024, marking steady progress in the series. The 110 meter long Ikshak, fully designed and built in India, is equipped for advanced hydrographic and oceanographic surveys, crucial for naval operations and commercial shipping. Accepted on behalf of the Navy by CMD Irvin Shari, the ship reflects six decades of GRSE, Navy partnership, which began with INS Ajay in 1961. With the delivery of its 75th warship to the Navy, GRSE continues to strengthen Atmanur Barbarat, while also building 14 more warships, including frigates and patrol vessels. The Indian Army's Vajra Corps, under the Western Command, has begun fitting its Soviet-origin BM-21 Grad multiple rocket launchers with anti-drone cope cages to counter modern battlefield threats. This move follows lessons from the Russia-Ukraine conflict, where drones proved highly effective against artillery. The BM-21 Grad, inducted in the 1960s and upgraded by Ashok Leland and Larson and Tubro, remains vital with five regiments operating nearly 100 launchers. By March 2025, the Army had also issued an RFI for indigenous 122mm rocket ammunition, reinforcing self-reliance. The Cope Cage upgrade extends to Smirch and Panaka systems, enhancing survivability against drone strikes, and ensuring India's artillery remains effective along its western and northern borders against Pakistan and China. India strongly criticized Pakistan for its repeated, reckless and warmongering statements, calling them a tactic to divert attention from internal failures. The response came after Pakistani Army Chief General Asim Munir, during a U.S. visit, threatened to destroy any Indian dam on the Indus River, claiming Islamabad would defend its water rights at all costs. Earlier, India had dismissed his remarks as nuclear saber-rattling, Raising concerns about Pakistan's nuclear command integrity, MEA spokesperson Runner Jeswal warned that any misadventure would invite painful consequences, citing recent demonstrations of India's resolve. He also expressed regret that such comments were made in a friendly third country. In April, India had similarly rebuked Munir for calling Kashmir Pakistan's jugular vein, reiterating it as India's union territory. During his Independence Day address, Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced that India plans to increase its nuclear power generation capacity by more than 10 times over the next two decades. He emphasized the goal of achieving energy independence, reducing reliance on imports, and making the country self-reliant in energy. India's current nuclear capacity stands at 8.8 .8 gigawatts, contributing less than 2% of the total power mix. To facilitate private sector participation, the union budget for FY26 proposed amendments to the Atomic Energy Act and the Civil Liability for Nuclear Damage Act. Modi also highlighted India's clean energy achievements, including reaching the 50% renewable energy target five years early, a 30-fold growth in solar capacity over 11 years, 
expansion of hydropower, and investments in the green hydrogen mission. An Austrian military aviation analyst assessed that the Indian Air Force inflicted severe damage on Pakistan Air Force assets during Operation Sindor. He claimed that 19 Pakistani aircraft were damaged, including six in the air and 13 inside hangars. The tally reportedly involved high-value assets such as two AWACS, an IL-78 MP aerial refueling tanker, a C-130 transport aircraft, and 10 frontline fighter jets. While India has confirmed certain outcomes of the operation, it has not released detailed figures. The analysts suggested that the strikes targeted Pakistan's surveillance and long-range operational capabilities, marking one of PAF's most significant setbacks in decades. The operation, which continues to stir strategic and political debate, highlighted IAF's planning and precision in degrading enemy air power. Pixel Space India, under CEO Awise Ahmed, clarified its much-debated zero bid for Ion Space's public-private partnership program to build India's first fully indigenous 12-satellite Earth observation constellation. The consortium, comprising Pixel, Satcher Analytics, Druwa Space, and Pearsight Space, won the mandate for a rupees 1,200-plus core project aimed at national security, marine surveillance, agriculture, and climate monitoring. Concerns arose when the group sought no direct funding, unlike rival bids, sparking transparency debates. Ahmed explained that the consortium would raise most funds independently, with Ion Space offering a repayable rupees 350 crore loan. With satellites already in development and Pixel's global market presence, the consortium emphasized data sovereignty and India's strategic independence in the growing global EO data market. The Indian Air Force's Tejas MK-2 program was reported to have entered a crucial phase of development with significant enhancements in fuel capacity and mission endurance. Officials indicated that Hindustan Aeronautics Limited and the Aeronautical Development Agency were designing new external fuel tanks, including a 1,300-liter supersonic tank and two 1,800-liter pinched-waist tanks to be paired with the jet's 3,300 kilograms internal fuel system. Together, these upgrades could raise total fuel capacity to nearly 7,100 kilograms, giving the fighter a ferry range of up to 3,000 kilometers. Powered by the GE F414 engine, the MK2 is expected to far surpass the Tejas MK1 in both range and endurance. With air-to-air -air refueling and oxygen generation systems, officials suggested the jet could remain airborne for over 10 hours. The MK-2 is intended to replace legacy fighters like the MiG-29, Mirage 2000, and Jaguar in the coming years. <laughs> India's LCA Tejas MK-1A was reported to be emerging as a game-changer for the Indian Air Force, particularly in scenarios where stealth and long-range precision matter most. Developed by HAL and ADA, as a 4.5-generation multi-role fighter, the aircraft incorporates major upgrades over its MK-1 version, including a reduced radar cross-section, advanced ASA radar systems, and integration of the Astra MK-2 BVRAM, with a strike range beyond 160 kilometers. These features were said to give it an edge over legacy fighters like the Mirage 2000 and Su-30 MKI, which, despite their proven track records, are more detectable and less integrated with cutting-edge systems. The timeline gained relevance in 2025, with Pakistan unveiling its FATA-4 missile and launching its Asia-1 channel, accused of spreading disinformation during Operation Sindor. Against this backdrop, the Tejas MK-1A was highlighted as a platform capable of ensuring aerial dominance and strengthening India's regional security posture. India and France are moving toward a joint venture between the Gas Turbine Research Establishment, GTRE, and Safran to develop a 120 kN thrust engine 
for the Advanced Medium Combat Aircraft AMCA. Reports suggested that while the engine will integrate select sixth-generation technologies like a cooler running core, it may exclude an adaptive cycle core due to the technology's current immaturity. The Ministry of Defense has not yet confirmed Safran's selection, but an announcement is expected before year-end when the deal is likely to be finalized. Safran has reportedly committed to delivering a production-ready engine, within a 10-plus two-year timeline, matching India's target to begin AMCA MK2 production by 2035. India will also retain the option to modify the engine core later, paving the way for future adaptive cycle engines around 2040, potentially replacing Su-30 MKI fighters. Meanwhile, GTRE and academic partners are continuing research into adaptive propulsion technologies. That's all from YKS team for now, hope you liked today's video. Please subscribe our channel for more such videos. Thanks for watching.